After connecting your Aruba wireless access points into your network, you can go and register those devices at portal.arubainstanton.com. Now, if you haven't created an account there, then you'll be prompted to create your account. And then once you do that, you're going to see this homepage. And the homepage is broken up into several different categories. Now, in the past, when you would purchase a wireless access point, you would manage that access point locally on the device. But most vendors are now allowing you to manage all your devices, and this could be across many different locations, from a cloud portal. Some companies will charge extra for this or will charge after a year, while other companies will not. Aruba, which is owned by HP, is not charging anything extra, and there are no annual fees. Now, here we see my two wireless access points. If you need to add additional access points, you can click on the Add Devices, and you can put in your serial number, and then it will find the device as long as it's reachable online, and then you can go ahead and connect to it. And once you see those devices, you can see that they're showing up by serial number. I can click expand and see some additional information. So for instance, I can see the identification. I can choose whether or not to turn off the lights that show up on the device. So if those lights are a distraction, we can choose the quiet light mode. I'll go ahead and turn the normal mode back on. Having the lights on is an advantage because you know whether or not the device is working. If you have it in quiet mode, however, then in certain cases, it will make it less distracting to some people if it's very close to them. Over in the middle section, you can see the connectivity. It's connected to a network switch. This is the symbol that you see here for the network switch. And then it goes out to the internet through the firewall. We also see the local network IP. So this is the IP address of the device that automatically got assigned due to DHCP or Dynamic Host Control Protocol. If you don't have a DHCP server, then there is a default IP that you can connect to and then you can manually set up your connection out to the internet that way. On the right-hand side, we see radio. So right now it's set to 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. They're both turned on. They don't need to both be turned on. And we'll talk about this more in this particular list of videos. But as of right now, by default, both of these radios are on. And there's some advantages and disadvantages to both of those options. If I click on topology, I can see my two wireless access points, and I can see that right now there's no clients connected to them, but I'm going to change that soon. And both of those devices are connected into the network switch. If I had one of these devices, say, off in another location connected to another switch, then you would see two switches instead of just the one. If I go and click on this gear in the right-hand side, then I have the option to manage the radio as well as DNS information, which means the domain name service, which goes ahead and matches up names to IP addresses in order so we can access websites, say, by name instead of IP information. I'm going to go into radio management and DNS a little bit later. For now, I'm going to click on X and bring us back to the home page. Not all cloud portals look exactly alike, but they do all give you the opportunity to go ahead and look at the way that the current setup is, as well as make changes as needed.